So what lies ahead for the Adani group? What should SEBI importantly be doing? These are some of the questions we want to raise. Joining me now is Saurabh Majumdar. He's editor at Business Today magazine. Kranti Batini is uh, director equity strategy at uh, Wealth Mill Security Private Limited, a member of BSC as well. Himindra Hazari is an independent research analyst uh, with, uh, and also joining me is Alok Churiwala, MD Churiwala Securities, uh, former director at the Bombay Stock Exchange. I want to get each of you to tell me what lies ahead. Uh, Saurabh, why don't you start? You've had this one month which has been turbulent, almost uh, several of Adani's stocks are 85% of what Hindenburg predicted in terms of their meltdown. Could it get worse in your view? Is this only, in a way, the, the uh, perhaps uh, the tip of what could lie ahead? Uh, Rajdeep, uh, we've been calling it in business today the Hindenburg iceberg. Uh, so because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the Adani group just did not see it coming. You know what happened to the FPO, how it was somehow managed to have scraped through and then called off. Uh, because the stocks just kept, uh, you know, falling, and we had a discussion earlier on that. Now, as far as going forward is concerned, I think there are several lessons to be learned from the Adani fiasco, if I may call it that. Uh, one is, mm -hmm. you know, this whole business of controlling a large stake and not having enough flo floating stock has really led to a rally last year. Uh, where 100% plus market capitalization growth was seen in Adani stocks. And that a lot of these people, uh, you know, believed in, but actually turned out to be almost a paper rally because if your floating stock is so low, uh, obviously the stocks will become volatile and move in a, in a certain direction mm -hmm. when the going is good and crash when the going is, uh, you know, is bad. So one lesson for sure is that the floating stock, and, and this has been talked about by valuation experts, that this whole obsession with control mm -hmm. needs to actually go. Stock, hold, uh, stock uh, you know, markets need broader uh, shareholding uh, by companies of this size and scale. That's one. But the more important part is about transparency. I think the lesson Adani needs to really learn from here on and, and we don't really know where this bloodletting will stop as far as stocks is concerned. But the lesson needs to be, which needs to be learned is you need to engage, you need to be transparent. There are lots of fogginess still continues about the Adana Let Group, me... and that's what the stock markets are hitting. So what, therefore, Himendra Azari, given the fact that there is still a question mark over exactly a lot of the transactions that were done, allegations that have been continuously made, even now are made, over the role of Mr. Adani's brother, Vinod Adani, about allegations of round tripping. We haven't heard from SEBI. Do you believe SEBI must now break its silence, do more than just that one press release that came a few weeks ago saying we are probing or looking into it? Do they need to do more, given that the meltdown continues? They needed to do more right from day one. When the Adani shares were rising, when everyone knew that the floating stock in most of these Adani companies was very limited, there was such a huge and stupendous rise in the share price. And normally, SEBI has excellent surveillance systems. And therefore, it was the responsibility of SEBI uh, to have conducted an investigation at that point in time and to, and to inform the market about the rise. Today, you know, one of the great uh, silences, the great silence that we have is from the regulator. The regulator really has not come out with anything specific on this matter. And the critical no, point... No, but the flip now side, the Hemendra, would be that the regulator will say we haven't had enough time to actually come up. We are carrying on our investigations. We can't short circuit those investigations. You see, when there's been such a spectacular crash, when I think it is more than, I think, $120 billion of, uh, reduction in the market capitalization, one expects the regulator to give up its power silence and come and reassure the market because the market needs to know that whether the Hindelberg accusa accusations have some credibility or not. The fact that the market prices okay, that of the 
So, so you're Indeed. saying that SEBI has to provide some kind of reassurance to the markets that are continuously, even now, jittery a month later. Mr. Churiwala, you were, I remember a month ago with Mr. Azari, at that time you said, don't worry, all will be well. One month later, we still don't know how bad it could get. But Rajdeep, you, we have to realize that one month later, what we are seeing is companies where uh, valuations were very lofty have come off almost by 85%. The other companies where valuations perhaps are not as obscure have come down, maybe not by 85, maybe by 50 or 60%. But market seems to have, in a manner of speaking, stabilized. The, you see, when there is a run on a bank, you know, even the most solvent bank can't stand. Mm -hmm. In this hit job, which I called it then and I continue to call it now, what happened was there was a run on the Adani share. And willy-nilly, they have managed to ward off that threat. They've stayed solvent. They have prepaid loans. Are you saying, the, are worst making, is, are you uh, saying the worst is over? Are I'm you saying, saying the worst is over, I'm, Mr. Churiwala? No, it's still early days, Rajdeep, when a damage of 85% happens in a stock or when damage of 50% happens in a stock, one month is not enough. The stock will have to consolidate. It will take a few months, mm -hmm. uh, if not a few mm -hmm. quarters, for things to, uh, uh, for the real picture to come through. I'm not saying that the stock prices will not half from here. Maybe it will. Because finally, in market, we have a saying uh, in Gujarati, Bhav Bhagwan Che. So, you know, the price is the greatest determinant. And in this case, okay. also, the price has determined that there was froth, which has gone away. And let's see uh, how what the future holds. You know, but, you know, that, that in a way, Kranti uh, Bathini, do you believe that it's simply a case of the froth has gone? The fact was that there were a few stocks overvalued and that has corrected itself. Or is there something more? Because we are getting, even in the last month, more and more revelations coming out, particularly possibly of stock manipulation allegations as well as round-tripping allegations. Do you believe that the dust has fully settled until SEBI comes out with a clear statement on exactly what the situation is? Should SEBI now stand up to be counted? Rajdeep, if you see the market uh, movements of Padani Group, uh, uh, price changes the perception of the people. As long as the stocks have been rising, uh, people were chasing those stocks and uh, uh, there was a party was on. Once the bombshell of uh, Heidenberg report came on Adani Group and what we witnessed is a market capitalization erosion of more than $135 billion, which translates to more than 11 lakhs crores. Right now, if you ask the dusty settle, the, the saga of news that are coming for, uh, from, uh, from different kind of reports have been hampering the sentiment of uh, Adani Group shares. So every day some kind of one positive news, the other day some kind of negative news has been, uh, uh, the, has been dampening the sentiment of no, the but shares. It's also, of but it's also, so, Krati, that people seem to be believing these stories. You know, we've, Adani gave a detailed response to Hindenburg, but it appears for now a large number of people seem to be believing what Hindenburg said. Pradeep, uh, 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 Hedenberg have come up with different kind of allegations and uh, the company have been categorically mentioning that these are the allegations. But we need to wait and see how these things are going to evolve and proven. But till now, they are not proven by any kind of uh, regulator or any kind of uh, reputed authority. Now, coming to the point, uh, okay, what they have been doing is from past one month, they have been repaying their debt and prepaying their debt. And uh, if you see in the next one year, Adani Group has to pay around a debt of around bond obligations around $2 billion. And as per the recent reports, they have a cash around 31,000 crores in their balance sheets. So uh, uh, the group has to take more measures to increase the investor confidence to make the dust to settle in the coming days. So is it in a way, therefore, Saurabh Majumdar, actually the last month has in a way been a wake-up call for Adanis, not just for the regulator, and actually gives an opportunity for the Adanis to get their act together. Uh, you know, I, I was reading a piece by Swaminathan Iyer, who actually seems to believe that this is actually an opportunity for Mr. Adani to actually get his act together and make his books cleaner, more the governance more transparent. Do you see that happening? I, I completely, uh, you know, buy this point that this is uh, as good as big a wake-up call. Unfortunately, it is, you know, it has really caused a lot of havoc and uh, problems uh, uh, overall in terms of 
the Adani group. But I think it is as good a wake-up call as any other, Rajdeep, for the simple reason that the, this is the issue as I come back is transparency, how the you know there is there are lots of other fogginess uh, which is swirling around what is the source of some of the funds what are the, the you know the funding right. which is uh, led to some of these acquisitions these every day there seems to be something or the other coming up to which not every answer is actually uh, being provided you know i must say so there are allegations which are of course in the public domain as in as adani group has said earlier about to hindenburg no, but uh, do, to you agree, do you agree with what himendra do you, do you agree with what himendra hazari is saying that sebi now needs to step up and reassure the markets that they are carrying out a free and fair investigation well, exactly. That's the role of the regulator, Rajdeep. And my view is that, you know, that is where probably the market is waiting, which is why you don't see that complete settling down of the stock market prices yet. Because I think the SEBI report and the SEBI investigation, mm -hmm. if you see, there are multiple facets to it. There is this whole issue of who's the ultimate beneficial ownership of the shares, who are the people who are invested into it. Even there is this question about who were the FPO investors. You know, all of this, SEBI needs to go into it, not just the uh, allegations I by Hindenburg, but also how, who were the mm -hmm. sellers. Uh, at the, who caused this whole stock route. That's also another investigation but you, which needs to be done. But do you believe, Hemendra Azari, given the political, uh, the political fallout of what's happening, that we will actually get to the bottom of it? Do you really believe that, uh, you know, the, all, with all the political noise, can investors expect clarity? No, I don't think that you will see that because of the perceived political proximity of this group, I think by now the regulator should have conducted some investigations which the media then have covered. But so far one does not even get a whiff of that. So sadly, it doesn't look like that the regulator or any other agency is going to do anything for the moment. They, I think they will all wait for the storm to pass and then they may come up with some kind of Okay, we're, we're having some problem with Himendra's audio, but uh, Mr. Churiwala, do you also accept that SEBI now cannot stay quiet? Because the longer it stays quiet, the more the suspicion is that SEBI, ha is SEBI doing a free and fair investigation or is it being politically influenced? It's in the interest of Adani's, of the investors, of the government of India for SEBI to come out with a clearer report, to come out with a report. See, being a SEBI regulated, uh, SEBI regulated entity myself, you know, it would not be proper on my part to comment on what SEBI, my regulator, ought to do or not ought to do. But I will say a couple of things. A, uh, you know, one of the main tasks that SEBI needs to, uh, is uh, mandated with doing is the free and fair uh, uh, conduct of the markets. If you see in this entire episode, and you will have to give credit to SEBI for that, that not one day has trading been suspended. Despite so much volatility in the market, there has been not a single payment default. Despite Adani stock okay. falling 85%, the market has been allowed to discover prices freely. No artificial bans were imposed. Nothing of that sort has happened. So that proves to the world that our market has is a, now a matured market. While there may be aberrations in, you know, individual companies, but as a capital market mm -hmm. as a whole, we are a, in a very evolved space. One more point I'd like to make, and that is mispricing. Valuations often are mispriced. You know, we've seen earlier it happen in the crypto world where valuation went sky high. We've seen them happen in startups and new age companies where growth is the forte. And, you know, growth was valued at differently. Today, of course, things are being looked at with a very large magnifying glass. Things are being looked at in a very different light. So, uh, you know, uh, like I, I always say, hindsight... No, whether it was mispricing or perfect. manipulation, whether it was mispricing or manipulation, the jury is still out on that. That is where SEBI needs to tell us exactly what happened. They need to come out with clarity. If SEBI doesn't provide clarity, the markets will remain volatile possibly and therefore investor confidence will be affected. And as the last month has shown, you, even if you're as big as Mr. Adani was, you can sometimes fail. What we need, as Saurabh Majumdar put, is transparency above all else and sooner 
rather than later. We'll have many more discussions on these issues. These are the topics that at the moment most prime time news doesn't touch. We will continue to touch them. That's what we will do here on the 9pm news. I appreciate my guests joining me.